One day, my brother, Special K, he says to me, uh, he met a man who wants to put out a record. That person's name was Rick Rubin. Um, but my brother could not record the record, do any, anything outside because he was signed to Sugar Hill Records at the time. So I, I believe they had him like locked, locked in a contract. And Rick, actually Rick Rubin wanted to record um, Special K and Kumo D. Then just Special K, but my bro- like I said, my brother, my brother asked me, "Do you wanna uh, record a song with Rick Rubin?" I was reluctant. It took my brother. My brother was asked me about two weeks. The third week, I said, "Okay, let me go downtown, go to meet the guy Rick Rubin." We went down to NYU. That's where Rick was. We met in his dorm room. First impression. As a person, I liked him, his attitude, everything was fine, but he just didn't really look hip-hop to me. Um, But I conversed with him for a while, and I really felt really good about Rick Rubin. I said, okay. So we went ahead, and oh, I had a a DJ at that time, I I, I can't skip over this, named Louie Lou, DJ Louie Lou. Yeah, we would go down to Rick's dorm room and meet, and Rick Rubin had a drum machine called a Roland 808. And I remember practicing rhymes, and um, I think we went, this was so long ago, uh, we went to a spot, I can't remember where, where we would, where Louie Lou would practice his scratching. I don't think we did all of this in Rick Rubin's dorm room, not, not in, in a college dorm room. We recorded the song at Power Play Studio in Queens. Um, which later on, <laughs> a lot of hit records came out of it. And I actually went back to work the next day, forgot completely about the record. And um, I remember we we had we did a uh, record release party, and it was at a club called Danceteria. And the Beastie Boys, well, they're actually, oh, this is so interesting. There was one of the Beastie Boys, I can't remember which one, one or two of them are actually on the crowd participation part of the It's Yours record, because there were three versions, I believe, the radio, um, extended play, I'm sorry, instrumental, and scratch party death mix. And, you know, so anyway, so I remember um, after the the record release party, which, which was a hit, which was my, this was my first ever performance in front of that many people in a club. Like I said, I did the block parties and, you know, little spots came off, crowd reaction, everything. I remember I was at work and um, I was with the lead pharmacist, Ken. That was his name. And I turned on the radio. And at that time, midday, I believe it was Tony Humphreys was his name. DJ Tony Humphrey. I, I'm almost sure. Like I said, we're talking 84, 85. And um, I hear the number one requested rap song of the day. I'm waiting to hear Run DMC. <laughs> and this was so interesting because they pronounced my name incorrectly. They said TLA Rock. With this, and then I heard the intro to It's Yours come on. I remember losing it right there. <laughs> I had that. Now, this is the, now the head pharmacist. He, what's hip hop? You don't know, he didn't know what hip hop was. And I called the manager over, and we were all in a huddle back there listening to the song. As soon as I hit my block, I got back to the neighborhood. Everyone was running up to me. So that was the life changer. Uh-huh.